Jake Oliver. What a play from Jake Oliver. And Madison Fry! Tie game! That's in play down the third baseline. Peter makes the great play from Peter McNeil. Justice already took advantage of that. What a play over at third. He's heading home. Oh, he's out. He's going to be out. Jordan Wright takes out Trey Clinton. Right. Flips it over to first and still gets Alex Harden. Crush, get out, ball later. Two. And he might have just missed it. Caught and run from Jordan Wright. That's a fair ball to Jake What a play from Jake Oliver. And Madison Fry! Yeah, tie game! That's in play down the third baseline. Peter makes the great play from Peter McNeil.
that's a fair ball to Jake Hall. What a play from Jake Hall. And that is his run. Yes, I game. That's in play down the third base line. Peter makes a great play from Peter McNeil. To that. What a play over at third. That oh. in play, and he might have just missed it. Caught and run from Jordan Wright. Crot, get out, ball later. And that ball is out of here. Walk off home run. Oh, top of the out is where it's coming home. And, oh. it's out. and that's a shot. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to AWA Wiffleball regular season. And we've got a good matchup for you here today. The Pacific Pilots powerhouse best team in the AWA sitting at 13 and two, taking on the third seeded currently Atlantic Aces expansion team sitting at eight and seven. I'm Jack Blayhouse joined by Chase Winkler. And uh, this is this is a good matchup we got here today. Last last week, the the pilots played the Cyclones. Unfortunately, we couldn't get that broadcast going live. But tough tough stretch of games for the uh, Pacific Pilots, and so far they've been able to handle it. Yeah, this is going to be a fun matchup today. I mean, I think coming into this week, we got Keaton and Mark powering the way right now for the Pilots, and DJ's also leading the league in pitching. So this is a just team that's just firing on all cylinders right now, going up against this Aces team that's kind of hit a bump in the road, so to speak, the last couple of series, and have been. Trying to get a serious sweep here. Well, one thing's for sure, the Atlantic Aces, they need their their star player, Moses Valdez, dialed, um, and they have him today. So we'll, we'll look. We're looking at the, the starting lineup for the Atlantic Aces. Captain Aaron Schofield will lead it off, followed by Moses Valdez, the MVP so far for the Atlantic Aces. Morgan Granish hit his first career home run last week, starting to get a little hot. Jack Scholl and Kanoa Jandok, who've been excellent power-wise for the Atlantic Aces. Looking at the Pacific Pilots on the mound, DJ Oliver leads the league in ERA. Aces are going to have a little bit of difficulty with him on the mound. Mark Campanero really has started to pick it up, second in the league in home runs right now with six. 2021 Silver Slugger. Keaton McKay also has six home runs. And then Josh Campanero having a career year at 429 average. Brad McGinnis will not be here today. That means Mark Campanero will be the game two pitcher. But this, this is probably the toughest lineup to face in all the AWA. Yeah, definitely. This Aces team is solid one through five. I mean, they can all hit. They're showing the power here recently, and it's going to be a fun game against DJ here today. And with that being said, we are ready for the first pitch here. And here we go. Aaron Schofield steps in. DJ leading the league with a 1.0 ERA heading into this week. Two and zero count. Aaron Schofield. Aaron under the radar because he fouls that off. Has really picked it up. Started off a little slow offensively, but now he's third in the league in average. Yeah, Sco started off a little slow, but now he's starting to pick it up. Having a 465 average so far this season. Uh, three home runs and 14 RBI. So that's productive so far. Looking at Aaron Schofield right now. Looks like he's a little banged up after swinging there, tweaking his back. Unfortunately, the Aces have had their issues with their back right there as he fouls another one off. Yeah, that's uh, it's going to be something to watch the rest of this game. I mean, first at bat of the game, Sko's starting to feel something act up in his back. I mean, that can't be good. If you joined us about two weeks ago, Moses Valdez. Stopped mid-game in the first inning. Had to be taken out of the game with a back injury. Hopefully this, we don't have the same thing here. As Aaron Schofield gets on with a walk, great way to start the game facing DJ Oliver. Yeah, Moses answered back from that back injury. Nice. I mean, didn't, I don't think he missed any time at all. So came back. He's 
Been struggling a little bit in those game twos, but he'll be looking to get it back today against this lethal Pilots offense. That'll be a ball high there to Moses Valdez. Fouls that out of play. And, you know, DJ has been electric all year. This is also probably the worst conditions he's pitched in all year. Yeah, it's pretty moist out here today. We've got a light rain falling down right now, so that's going to affect the grip on the ball. I'm surprised that he doesn't have a towel out with him on the mound right now. I'm sure we'll be seeing that be broken out here as the game progresses. One and two count. And that's a hard hit ball right down the line. Gets by Mark Campanero. That'll be a single. And Aaron Schofield will look at the replay. And it looks like they missed him there on the replay. And an uncharacteristic miss there from Keaton McKay. A double for Moses Valdez. Yeah, and that was kind of scary like we were talking earlier. Aaron had that kind of injury in his first at bat, and he kind of slipped there rounding second base. Didn't know if he was going down with an injury, but kind of had, like you said, that <laughs> little like swimming moves to get to third base and luckily missed the tag. He looks like hopefully he might have made a miraculous recovery after dodging that ball, but we'll keep watching that as Morgan Granich fouls it back. Yeah, like we were saying, it's kind of wet and slippery out here, so maybe that had to do with it. Maybe nothing with the injury and just wet grass getting, getting under his feet. We look at a strike right down the middle, 0 and 2. Like you said, Granich had his first career home run last week. And that is just foul. DJ Oliver, if he if he gets out of the first inning, good luck scoring on him. But if he does run into problems, it usually is in the first inning. He's trying to figure out his grip, trying to locate his slider. Yeah. And there we see field manager Tom coming out and providing the towels. <laughs> Gotta <laughs> love, love it. Love to see it. Yeah. Got him, strike three. And there's a much needed out for DJ Oliver for the first out of the game. After letting the first two guys on, let them get on second and third. That's a big strikeout right there. DJ starting to find his command a little bit around the zone. Jack Scholl steps in and hits one hard foul. Jack for the first three weeks of the year was top three in home runs. Cooled off a bit here, we'll see if he and kind of find that power surge once again. Yeah, like you're saying, Jack's got four home runs on the year so far. He's kind of quieted down a little bit in the, as the season's progressed, but no better time to get going than against DJ. Got him, strike three. And just like that, right when the aces looked like they got a little momentum there, DJ comes back, strikes out two batters back to back. And up steps Kanoa Jandok. 206 average so far this season for Kanoa. Three home runs, 14 RBIs, 15 walks. Pretty solid season so far. Dingers are nothing mindset right here. No bigger home run than the one he hit against Evan. So that's fouled back. Controversial, <laughs> but it still counted. Yeah, he tends to come up clutch in the biggest moments, and this will be a good spot for him right now. Two outs. Big spot for him. One and one count. Good eye there from Kanoa to watch that. Just skim the inside of the plate. Swings there, two and two. Got him. Strike three, and just like that, DJ Oliver gets out of a jam there in the first, and we're into the bottom of the first, 0-0 zero, zero the score.
And here we go, getting ready to start the bottom of the first. DJ Oliver will step in, and DJ, known for his potent pitching abilities, has had a little bit of a slower start batting side. Yeah, you know, I'd like to take a look at his leadoff home runs. He tends to where he has a lot of his power, honestly. He likes to start the game off, uh, kind of ambush the pitchers, so to speak, and get a good pitch early on and put a good swing on it. Moses Valdez pitching here today. Game one starter for the Aces. He hasn't pitched in rain yet in his AWA career, but he's third in the league in strikeouts, even with missing a, a full series to a bad back injury. Yeah, one of the most effective pitchers in the league, definitely, and was really got off to a really hot start. It was early on in the MVP talks, but over the past couple of pitching times, he's looked really good in the first game, and then kind of fallen off in the second game and been rocked early, so. Seed. I'll be interested to see how he fares stamina-wise today. He'll issue a leadoff walk to DJ Oliver and up steps Mark Campanero, who's been honestly the hardest batter to get out over the last couple weeks. Yeah, he's got six home runs so far this season, second in the league right now. To go along with that, he's got a 440 batting average. So, I mean, he's just having a great season so far. At the beginning of the year is... A little worried for his career numbers. Really struggled, and then the last two weeks has really picked it up, hitting two home runs in back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah, he's gone hot. It's helped with the warm weather, definitely. And What a play from Aaron Schofield, and that will stay in the park. Didn't go past the wall. But that's unlucky there for Mark Campanero as he flies out to arguably the second-best fielder in the league. Standing right behind the guy stepping into the box right now. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, I, w I wouldn't doubt Mark's able to keep up that power even in these wet conditions. And just like that right there, you ripped a line drive that would have been to the wall probably if Schofield wasn't there. Looks at a first pitch swing in there. 0 and 1 count, Keen McKay. Ooh, nice catch there. Chase Winkler. <laughs> Down the middle there. 61. No pitch. A little too hot there. Swing in there. One and two count. Keen McKay. Just low. Evens the count. Two and two. Biggest reason to pile success has been Keaton's defense and power. As he looks at ball three right there. No one thought he'd be second in the league in a home runs halfway through the season. Yeah, you know, he's he's more of an on-base kind of guy. Really knows his zone, but yeah, providing the power so far early this season, it's been a nice surprise for the Pilots, definitely. That'll be two outs after Moses Valdez gets Keaton McKay to chase on an inside pitch. And speaking of somewhat surprises, why the Pilots are 13-2, and two, this guy right here, Josh Campanero, having a career year Hitting 429, good for sixth in the AWA. Yeah, and you know, the thing I think that Josh is really good about is as we see the aces are putting a shift on him, you know, the typical lefty shift, but I'm looking at his spray chart right now, and he actually likes to pepper most of his hits to the left side of the field. You know, they put that shift on him, but he just smacks it the other way, and he gives him the base hit. He's been very good at taking pitches this year, and that's probably the biggest reason why he's had such a boost in average last year. A lot of swinging and missing at bad pitches here. He looks like he's swinging at the right pitches. Yeah, definitely. Pilots seem like they've really got their zone strike zone down this year. They're really seeing the pitches well and just keeping that lineup moving up there with the Aces for one of the most potent, if not the most potent offense in the whole league. Every batter in this lineup is a tough out, and they'll turn over the lineup here. After a walk right there, DJ Oliver will step in, walking his fir first plate appearance, trying to help himself out on the mound with a little knock here. Like you said, he got out of that big jam, striking out three guys in a row. In the top of the first, looking to help himself out here now in the bottom of the first, two outs here. We'll appeal down to the third base. Tom. 
say a one and one count. Mm -hmm. our, our ump at third base is not Getting a little paying attention. <laughs> Chit-chatting with the players over there. <laughs> Doing a little social. Love it. One and two count. Two and two now, even count. Tom Blaus was the backup color commentator last week. <laughs> Talked a lot about the field. <laughs> You hear him talking about it again also today. He said you should fire the field manager, if I'm not <laughs> mistaken. But he is the field manager. Yeah, I think he can bounce back. And that is in play to Jack Scholl, and he will make the out. And that is a great inning, keeping the pilots at bay. Zero runs come across. We're headed to the second. Zero, zero remains the score. Getting ready to start the top of the second. Aaron Schofield will step in. Hopefully his back is feeling a little better after tweaking it a bit. It's not. No, he's trying to work it out up there. To me, it kind of feels like he's just putting on a show here to give him, because he's so far he's made every play he's needed to make. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's trying to play the uh, broken item or whatever. Oh, poor Aaron. Edge, but oh, he's so injured. Dinger. I don't think DJ will feel bad for him at all here. Yeah. Well to hold there. Bases are known for their bad backs. <laughs> Need a team roller to be sponsored yeah. by someone yeah. or something like that. 2-0 count. That was a little outside, 3-0. and oh. DJ a little wild here early. Yeah, first inning we've had runners on base for both teams, but no runs have come across yet, so. Hits him on the elbow, and that'll be a four-pitch walk. Thought about swinging there, unfortunately couldn't. Will be one. Moses Valdez will now step in. Aaron getting on base again. See if Moses can get another pitch that he can rip down the third base line. Be wondering if Mark would be playing closer to the line this this at bat. The fate of the Aces franchise really lies on the players of two players of Moses Valdez and Aaron Schofield. Yeah, they're really the motor for this team and you know the other players are definitely contributors but yeah, like you're saying, they're the main two pitchers on this team. And, I mean, I know Morgan comes in and pitches for every once in a while but yeah, like you said, these guys are leading the offense a lot of time in the field and up to bat. Talking with Aaron Schofield preseason, he said the only thing holding the Aces back this year will be the pitching. And when just like he said, when Moses is dialed, they've been able, able to dominate. Mm -hmm. When he's not, they, they struggle. Yeah, definitely. And we've seen that last two series from them. And there's that slow pitch from DJ Oliver. Really gets batters to bite. Now the count will go to full. He's really good at changing his speeds out there. And that is a hard hit ball. That's fair. That's a ground rule double. Aaron Schofield will hold at third, and that is back-to-back -back doubles for Moses Valdez. He has come out of his shoes swinging here early. Yeah, you know, I thought Mark might be playing the line a little closer after he was peppered by Moses down the line last time, and Moses just took advantage of it fully again, and same exact hit, kind of. We do have spray charts and hit charts for the players, but, you know, if the captains don't ask for them, then. Yeah. Can't, can't they help? I'm Personally, I mean, I'm not going to be helping the pilots out. I mean, they don't need any more help this true, season. True, true. Yeah, and, and when you're playing the pilots, you need you need everything working. Yep. Similar situation that we had in the first inning. No outs. Aaron on third. Moses on second. Morgan up to bat. Let's see if he can rip a shot here. They really need their, their bottom half to continue the, the power they had early on in the season if they want the aces to do well here as Morgan swings there 0-1. Yeah, you know, you may not be having your day sometimes, but it's really just about keeping that lineup moving. And, and that's in play. Mark will hold him there, and that's a great play there from Aaron to kind of get Mark to look around, and that might have given him the time to get uh, Morgan to first. Yeah, and you saw Mark doing his due diligence, making sure Aaron wasn't going there, and I'm surprised he threw it, but uh, luckily Aaron may not be feeling too good with his back and didn't advance. Well, Aaron's the king of the fake throw at third to look and get the – the runner at third, and 
Mark probably knew that. Yeah. So that's why, you know, probably the fake throw might have not done anything. Exactly. And that's a hard hit ball from Jack Scholl. They'll get the out at second, but that will score a run. And the Aces score the first run of the day. Jack Scholl. Nice hit by Jack Scholl there. That thing was basically an inch or two off the ground. He just went down and got it like a golf swing kind of and ripped that thing to the right center. And Josh picked it up and got the force out at second. Noah Jandock will now step in with one out. He looks at a strike right down the middle, 0 oh and 1. Just a bit low, 1 and 1. DJ trying to work that rise ball in now. Does well to go up and get it, but it's just foul. 1 and 2 count now. Nice, nice piece of hitting right there by Kanoa, you know. Like I was saying, DJ's changing up speeds there. When I should to sit on that and Put a good piece on, just barely foul. Got him, strike three. And that'll be the second out of the inning. Just gets by him there. Uh, nice shot by DJ's really been having a choke hold on these bottom three batters besides that one run there. I mean, Aaron and Moses have been the ones really doing a lot of damage against him. And, and in the AWA, you will have bad games pitching. It's just a matter of those bad days. How can you limit the damage? Exactly. And DJ has been a master at limiting damage. But another tough situation right here facing Aaron Schofield, where the top of the Aces lineup has been very potent. As that is in play, off his foot, off his foot. Be a foul ball. Aaron just beating himself up today. He's hurting his back on the first <laughs> first one. He's taking foul balls off the ankle. And that is foul again. One, two count. Big pitch here. Jack Scholl's been running back and forth between first and second three times now. Get, get a little exercise in. Yeah, exactly. Sitting at your desk for nine hours a day. Does well to fight that off. I feel like 70% of the league, 80% of the league would be swinging and missing at that, but Aaron's got great contact. Yeah, just battling up there, knowing that there's two outs and not wanting to go down without a good fight. And that ball is going back, and that is out of here! Aaron Schofield knew right after he hit it, he flipped his bat. That's a three-run shot, and the Aces are now up four to nothing. Yeah, like you said, Aaron pimped that all the way. I thought Keaton might have played. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Never safe with Keaton back yeah. there. Luckily, uh, the ball just had enough below on it. It's about two, three feet outside of Keaton's reach, and. Nice home run from Aaron there to the deepest part of the park. Well, Aaron has bat flip twice this year, and it's been a, a long line out or a single. So every time he bat flips his bat, it's never a guaranteed home run. Yeah, I think definitely had the arc on it. I mean, I think it was sky high, but it just started to come down very quickly. Like we said, it's raining here. and There we go. Moses Valdez, easy single again. Just you guys just keep producing, getting on base. Both of them are six for six on base wise today so like we were saying earlier they're just the motors for this team get them going and produce the runs yeah the bat bottom half of the ace is just need to get on base for those two guys it seems like but that's tough right there so morgan Grant looks at a strike on the inside corner yeah and you know this bottom of the order isn't getting any favors from dj he's really executing his best pitches against them in the bottom of the order and it's a real tough situation having to hit those pitches right on the edge, but you got to prove it to these pitchers that, you know, you're going to throw those strikes to me, I'm going to be able to take that yard, and you're going to have to really work around me next time. One and two count. Two outs here in the top of the second. Just missed that one. Fouled back. Looked like a, a sinker that kind of just stayed in the heart of the plate. Just a little bit late right there. DJ, one of those throwers that can stay consistently at the top of the speed zone. Yeah, like you said, another sinker at the top of the zone just missed. And just in play to Mark Campanero. A tough throw. He will be safe. And just like that, Moses Valdez will look at the replay. And he was safe by a step. Nice hustle by Morgan there to beat out that play from Mark. 
Just like that, Moses Valdez gets up to third base. Aces are keeping it going. They got a little two out rally going here. Four runs this inning so far. And Jack had that nice hit his last at bat. Onto a knee right there, a nasty pitch. Uh oh. <laughs> What's uh? -oh? <laughs> Looks like. Uh oh. Ball is going back, and that is brought again. Keaton McKay. It doesn't matter. Why do we even? Why do we even play this game when Keaton's back there? Wow. Another rob. That's just unbelievable. I mean, anytime this guy's on the field, he's a threat. I mean, but another day at the park for Keaton. And just like that, the Aces do get three, four runs, and will go to the bottom of the second. We are ready to go here in the bottom of the second. Mark Campanero, the best hitter for the Pilots, swings at strike one, 0-1. Oh yeah, the Pilots are going to need to get something going here, but if anyone can do it, it's definitely the Pilots. They've got the most potent offense in the league, definitely, by far, and wouldn't doubt it, doubt it against them. They just got to start working here against Moses. Starting to come down here a bit. This is the worst weather we've had so far this year in late June. It's a nasty pitch right there, top of the zone, one and two count. You know, we're, I don't mean to get too technical, but we don't got batting gloves out here either, so <laughs> that, that bat gets kind of slick and not easy to get a good grip on it. And we got, yeah, kind of where the, the posture positioned. If Mark lets go of a bat, he might oh, yeah, we've got, severely damage his brother. We've got four guys that are in the <laughs> line of fire over there, <laughs> definitely. It's part of the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cup check. Ooh, Mark does well to fight that off. Almost missed it. Remains at one and two count. Mark looking to start chipping at this lead. Fouled back again. We'll get the sixth pitch of this at bat. Mark Campanero lying down his first plate appearance to Aaron Schofield. Good pitch there for Moses to kind of get Mark to chase. He does not. Count go to two and two. Full count to Mark Campanero. And at the eighth pitch of this at bat. And that ball is... A little bit hung up, and that just, I don't know how they'll score that. It looks like Jack probably had a play there. Yeah, it looks like that will go down as an error in the scores back there. Pretty easy pop-up for Jack, but with the weather might have been difficult. But, yeah, that definitely should have been out there. It is tough a little bit when you don't know where the fence is, mm -hmm. but always have the ball in front of you. Kind of got that white sky, so I'm sure the whiff ball was course. blending in like no other, so not an easy play. 2 1 count here to Keaton McKay, who we're not even surprised anymore that he robbed another home run. Uh, this guy got a solid two, three feet off the ground to make that, to make that catch, and that was just unbelievable. I think his belly button might have been above the yellow line out there, <laughs> so what a play. Yeah, it's like we, we saw that crazy play about five weeks ago or so from Keaton McKay, and now every time we see a robbed home run, it's like, what? It's just, it's nothing new anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, can you do something else, Keaton? Yeah, no, I'm please. Kidding. I'm kidding. Josh Campanero swinging first pitch right there, 0-1. Oh right down the middle there at 57, 0-2 oh count. Got him, strike, no pitch, stays alive. 
A little Mark. hot there from Moses. He had that 57. I thought it might have been close, but ultimately. Fouled out of play. Josh Campanero came in as the number two pick in the 2021 draft with his brother, Mark. And Mark took a lot of crap for drafting his brother second overall. <laughs> so far, I mean, no World Series championships, but so far this year, he swings over the top of that. Yeah, you know, you can't blame him for going with the family, believing in your brother, and starting to pay off dividends here in this, this coming seasons. That'll be the first out of the inning as Josh Campanero swings over the top, and now DJ Oliver will step in. Nasty pitch right there. 0-1. Oh DJ had a walk earlier this game. Be looking to get some going here against Moses. Just inside, two and one. Just misses again. Would have been a speed check anyways, but three and one, now the count. He will walk the bases loaded. And just like that, the tying run comes to the plate for the pilots in the form of Mark Campanero. Yeah, not ideal start to this inning for Moses. Uh, went out here, but bases loaded, and number two guy in home runs so in the league is up to bad, and 22 RPIs from this guy, so. Not, not the situation you necessarily want to find yourself in. No, nowhere to put him either, so. Does not go. 1-0. and oh. Swinging. Underneath that one and one count to Mark Campanero, who's really the biggest surprise this year is he's put away the eye black. Yeah, you know, had it going earlier in the season, but now nasty pitch, no pitch. Not seeing it anymore from him, you know. Might have been a change, but it obviously hasn't affected his game. You know, maybe earlier in the year he was struggling a bit, had the eye black, stopped using it, and being a competitive player that he is, you know, superstitious, decides to continue without it. Definitely, definitely. But one and two count now for Mark Campanero. Nasty pitch right there, strike three, and a huge strikeout there for the second out of the inning. Moses Valda is a, a rare strikeout from Mark Campanero. And no better time for Moses to come up there, just really battled and – against one of the best hitters in the league, said, Here, here's my best stuff. If you can hit it, hit it, and ultimately got the win in that battle. Up steps again, Keaton McKay, already a lock for Gold Glover. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's been, I think he's up to four or five home runs robbed so far this year, and with the home runs he's hitting also, I mean, it's just a lethal combo. Nasty pitch right there. Moses Valdez finding every part of the zone here early, 0-1. Quick 0-2. Oh Low there. Moses got ahead quick 0-2. Oh A quick check right there. The count remains 0-2. The speed gun went out for a bit, but we're back. Just outside at 57, 1-2 and two now. 2-2. Two, two. Full count now. Moses well, got ahead with that quick first two strikes, but three straight balls since. Just outside, he'll walk in a run. The first runner run of the day for the Pilots. Yeah, that's got to be tough. You know, I thought they were one pitch away from getting out of this without giving up a run, but four straight pitches to Keaton and walks in a run here for the first run of the, the day for the Pilots. Josh Campanero steps in 
Moses Valdez is not happy with that walk there. That's a hard hit ball, and that perfectly goes to the second baseman for the out. Wow. And we are out of the inning huge from Moses Valdez to get out of a bases loaded jam, and we head to the top of the third. If you're a fan of fantasy sports, head on over to AWA's Fantasy Wiffle Ball link in bio to win free weekly prizes. It's free to play. Create your lineup. Also pick games. Throughout the season, there'll be prizes given away every single week. And then for the playoffs, could be more um, prizes we'll throw in there as we get ready to start the top of the third inning. Kanoa Jandok will step in against a DJ. He's been sat down with two strikeouts so far today against DJ. A rare spot to be in for this Pilots team down in the last inning of the game. They haven't lost a single series this year. Only have two, and that is fair. He'll be out. We saw that kind of squibble back in, and nice shot by DJ there to reach around really quickly as Kanoa tried to go behind him on the base pass and make the nice tag on him. Aaron Schofield will step in. Who's him and Moses have been the offense for the Aces here in game one. One of the few batters that have been able to figure out DJ Oliver this year. Yeah, and Schofield had that home run, his last at bat accompanied with the two walks his first two at bats so really figuring out DJ so far today and looking to pat onto that lead here with the 4-1 lead here in the top of the third quietly Mos or, uh, Aaron Schofield has really started to put on a power show he had no home runs in the first three weeks last three weeks he's had a home run brought his total up to three on the season hits him there Maybe right on the his back. His back has been bothering him all day. It's the last thing you want if you're an Aces fan. These players are getting hit by yeah. wiffle balls. And that is fouled off. That looks that's the the iconic foul ball from Aaron Schofield. Usually fouls it right into that bush. Yeah, somehow hits it almost directly right behind him into the bushes. <laughs> Don't really know how he does that, but And that is Caught from Mark Campaniero. What a play there. Mark has had a lot of balls hit in his direction here today, and he does make the play there. Two outs in the inning to finally get Aaron Schofield out. Beautiful reaction by Mark there. Knocked it down and had the quick cat-like reflexes to snag it before it touched the ground and made the easy play over there. Or I should say made the hard play look yeah. easy over yeah. there. Strike one to Moses Valdez. And that is in play. We'll see if the spin affects it. And it'll be safe on the play. We'll look at the replay, but first glance, he did not come up with it. He's safe, safe by a step. Yeah, and don't know really what happened over there with uh, Josh, but it's like he kind of tripped over it and wasn't really able to grasp it at all. And Great hustle by Moses to get down the line for a base base hit. Normally when it's a little bit drier, those balls are spinning like crazy, but just because it's wet and the ball's sticking, didn't have as much English as we're normally used to. Still still difficult, but play that most first baseman should be able to make. Swing an 0-1 here early to Morgan Granich. O2 oh and that slider has been hard to hit here early for rookies facing DJ Oliver. Yeah, it's been a real trouble all season for everyone and got him. Strike 3 on the screwball. <laughs> we'll leave it there. We're headed to the bottom of the 3rd inning. 4 to 1 pass need 3 to tie, 4 to walk it off.
No, yeah. DJ Oliver will step in. Nasty pitch right there. Nicks the zone, 0 and 1. Pilots down to their final three outs of this game. Down three runs. We'll look to get on base anyway, anyhow, and start chipping at this lead. Inside again. Moses really needs to get a first out here. And that'll be a walk. The hardest out in the AWA is the first out. Right after that. Mark Look. up to bat here. Dangerous guy. Mark Campanero has gotten a little bit unlucky here today with his at-bats. He is facing a very solid pitcher. And that ball is hanging up. Morgan Granich will make the catch. And that'll be an out right there. Uncharacteristic day for Mark, 0 for 4. And here comes Keaton McKay up looking to put a drive into a ball and give the pilots their first hit of this game. Right down the middle right there, wiffle ball is very momentum based, especially on these, these quick games. And that is in play off the handle. He will get him, but DJ gets all the way to third. That's a productive out. As DJ will advance to third, Moses rather than throwing to his first baseman goes for the tag, but that'll be two outs. Yeah, a nice play by Moses there to just instead of giving it to his first baseman, decides to throw Keaton out there, peg him out, I should say, and get the second out of the game with a three-run lead here. Josh Campanero, the last hope right here for the Pilots. Just inside, ball one. Just missed the inside corner there. Swing in there. It was a good pitch to swing at. Would have been a strike regardless. One and one count. We'll see what. Fouls it back. And the Pilots now find themselves in a situation they're not normally in, down to their last strike. Mm -hmm. Moses has got that. Screwball slider that really just, he steps out of the box as he fouls that off. Nice job from Josh to foul it off to stay alive. Yeah, and like you were saying, you know, you pick up these ticks from these pitchers when they move their arm angles. It's still not easy to hit even if you know it's coming. Got him. Strike three, and that'll be a game one win for the Aces against all odds, giving the Pilots just their third loss of the year as we get ready to start. Game number three. Great game by the Aces there. Got those four runs on the top of the second. Gave up the run one in the bottom of the second, but proceeded to hold on for the four to one win here in game one. We'll be back for game two here shortly. Be looking at the chat here on YouTube. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, have any questions between games, no sideline interviewer today. I thought there was rumors of our friend Joe in the chat here today. Not seeing him right now. So we're getting ready to start game two. And it looks like, are they running back the same lineups? Uh, I'll figure that out here real quick for you all. <laughs> That's easy. Boom. Same exact lineup for both teams as we're getting ready to start. Perfect. These teams looking to run it back. Same lineup. Say, I'll run it again and throw our best against your best. DJ Oliver, a rare. Loss right there, did pitch well. But the Aces just hit a little bit better right there. Yeah. 
And here we are, getting ready to start game two. First pitch, DJ Oliver. And here we go. Aaron Schofield calls for time from the imaginary ump. I guess we're at the umps. <laughs> right away off that first pitch there. That, rise, that slider that DJ has been working all game. That's in play, and that's a tough play to make. He will be safe. And regardless, a slow roller for any batter is usually going to roll into singer, single, but Aaron's speed makes it almost a guarantee to be a hit. Yeah, it's an almost impossible play to make over there in the middle of no man's land. And nice effort from, from DJ just to try to make that play. Especially with this wet condition. And there's that slider that Aaron didn't chase at. Moses does there, 0-1. And that is in play foul. See, Aaron Schofield caught a little bit in no man's land there, didn't know what to do. Yeah, that ball was quite a bit in fair and then it just started to trail foul and ended up being about a foot or two foul there. Moses got a little bit zinged last week when he hit a ball that was foul and rolled back fair and unfortunately was thrown out. Always got to be re prepared for that. Swinging right there, strike three. That'll be one out here early for the Aces. And that'll be Moses' first time not getting on base today against DJ. Just a bit low right there to Morgan Granich. Oof. Big swing there on that slow riser. Morgan Granich was the second overall pick taken in this year's draft as he swings at a ball right there. Sace's team has a lot of good young prospects. Morgan Granich, one of them. He will be the game three starter. Yeah, and like you're saying, kind of having a slow start of the season for a first round pick, but it's not easy with the pitching being so up this year. Strike three right there. DJ Oliver starts this game off well. Two outs for giving up a hit to Aaron Schofield. The first at bat. Looks like a monkey out there catching these balls. <laughs> Jack Scholl, a good strategy there to kind of tire him out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jack Scholl got robbed last game from Keaton over there in that right center area. And he looks like he's just hanging right where it was last time. Mm -hmm. It's ready to pounce. Swing in there, Jack also got that RBI to get the Aces their first run of game one. Much needed. Nasty change up right there, 0-2. Been a kind of surprise this year for the Aces. Four home runs. It's a real high RBI guy for them. One and two. Does go around strike three. And that's tough right there. And we head to the bottom of the first, 0-0. Zero, zero. Here we are getting ready to start the bottom of the first inning. Moses Valdez on the mound. Facing DJ Oliver, looking to try and help himself out. Yeah, I'll be really interested to see how Moses does this game. This is where he's kind of fallen off the past couple series and been pulled mid-game in these game twos. If Moses can figure out a way to get through these game twos. Aces are going to be a tough team to, f to reckon with, one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and that's what they had going early on in the season is I mean, they when the game three would come around, they didn't want to take him out because he was dealing so well. And just like that, wow. That ball looked like it was gone right off the bat. 
And it'll be a long fly out. That thing was absolutely smacked. You could hear it right off the bat. That thing had it it's all barrel on ball. But, man, you got to wonder if the weather's playing a factor in that. Kind of just falling short there about the 102 mark. Tough regardless for DJ as Mark Campanero, who's also been a little unlucky today, steps in. 01. Everyone's kind of struggled offensively today except for Moses Valdez and Aaron Schofield. Yeah, you know, this is kind of surprising to see from the pilot so far. You don't see him get blanked to one run and game. Probably like the that. first time all year. Yeah, one hit from them in that first game, so it's a quiet day so far. Does well to lay off there. It was close. Mark looks at ball two. Moses has been really dialed in against Mark today. Tries to get him to chase on a slow curve. Mark does not bite. Now full count. Three and two. Not close, and Mark is aboard with a walk. And honestly, they'll take it facing Moses here today. Yeah, great pace and patience from Mark. Had a tough first game out there and drawing a walk after being down 0-2 in his first at bat this game. Up steps Keaton McKay, who's been held relatively in check, but has emerged as one of the best hitters on the pilots, if not the AWA here in the 2023 season. And that ball is playable, caught for the out. And honestly, if, if Mark even thought about going there, Mor or Moses was right there to quickly step on first. So good thing for Mark to just stay on the back. Yeah, I think Moses gave the first base a little courtesy tap anyways <laughs> with his foot in case Mark happened <laughs> to come off the bag there. So great play by Moses out there as a being an athletic pitcher. And that's a hard hit ball to Morgan Granich. He'll throw to first for the out. And that is a great inning there from the Aces as we head to the second inning. The score remains 0-0. Zero zero. <laughs> Kanoa Jandok will lead it off after making the play at first base. Said he couldn't even see it. The ball was just thrown perfectly in his hands there. <laughs> Looking to help the aces out here. Runs have been hard to come by early. Looks at a ball right there. Rain's starting to fall again here. And that is a fair ball down the line. And Kanoa is looking to go two, but Mark at shortstop. Does a great job to cover there to prevent it just being a single, but that's got to feel good for Kanoa getting on base for the first time today. Yeah, it's got to feel great. Nice hit right there, right over the first base, and solid single was looking too maybe, but ultimately it's held up at first, and Ace has got to love that. Ball one to Aaron Schofield, the average leader for the Aces. Been on base all day. And there's that patented foul ball straight to the tree. He's got to have one every at-bat. You know, it's not a bad way. Instead of dribbling over to the third baseman, he's making sure that thing's getting fouled and moving on to his next pitch. And there it goes again. It's honestly very impressive. Doesn't get cheated on those inside pitches. <laughs> it's consistent. One and two, now the count here. No outs here in the top of the second. And that is... Caught for the out. And we will look at the play. Call on the field is safe. Josh just missed, but we'll look at the replay. And he will be safe. Great play by Keaton out there. Once again, didn't know if he was going to let that hit the ground on. Just went out and snagged it and was ready to throw to first. If I'm Kanoa there, I'm surprised he took such a giant lead there, especially with this slick surface going to Keaton McKay. You always got to be prepared for that. Honestly, if anything's hit a Keenan McKay and I'm playing him the rest of the season, yeah. I'm not stepping off that bag. If I hit a ball, I think it's a home run, and Keenan's right there. I'm just going back to the dugout. <laughs> exactly. 
And that is in play to Mark Campanero. Knocks it down, throws to first. Safe. Josh Campanero's had some troubles over at first here today. Unfortunately, but Morgan or Moses will get on base, and Morgan will now step in trying to help his team out here. Yeah, like you're saying, uncharacteristic day from Josh over there at first. So he'll be looking to clean that up. Conditions are tough. Morgan steps in now with a new bat, 0-1, and, and it's been that slider, that slow slider that's a ball outside that's really gotten him to him today. DJ knows that. Yeah, he's been really having a tough time laying off that pitch, being in the ending up in the left-handed batter's box, but that pitch Just right like there. Just like that, yeah. Up. One and two. And DJ, one of the best at diagnosing what the batters are swinging at and kind of how to approach it. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't throw another strike during this at-bat. Yeah. Until Morgan can show me he can hit that pitch, I'm just going to keep throwing it. Got him. Strike three on a pitch that hits the plate. Two outs. And now Jack Scholl will step in. Big spot here. Got the first run. Scored in the first game. And now another spot right here with a runner at third. Yep, struck out his first at-bat today. I mean, this game. But in that first game, was really putting the ball in play. Like you said, had that... <laughs> fielder's choice that scored the run first run of the game that ultimately got them the lead and that game one win so first run's always the most important especially when you're facing the pilots he's off of ball one Kanoa Jandok who's on third right now will be next up got to think that's really starting to rain hard out here put that ball on the ground and try to make that defense make a play one and two count to Jack Scholl just misses the zone two and two brave to lay off that one right there yeah I haven't DJ hasn't broken that pitch out much today and just missed the bottom left corner there it was a beautiful pitch Just misses again now, full count. And Jack Scholl just praying those last two didn't hit the zone. And that one's a little bit farther away, but it will walk the bases full and up steps Kanoa Jandok. The man who doesn't feel pressure in a bases loaded situations apparently. Now this guy always comes up clutch in the biggest moments he's shown so far. We're not even halfway through the year, and he's got two or three huge walk-offs for this Aces team. So he'll be looking to do it here against, do it here again against one of the best, if not the best pitcher in the league, in my opinion. Not a walk-off situation, but the way Moses has been pitching, if you get even a couple runs on the board, can go a long way. Yep. It's a good pitch to swing at, an even better pitch though, 0-1. Oh that pitch was top of the zone. Swinging high right there, one and two. Two outs here. One of that riser. Lays off of the sinker right there, two and two count. Noah Jandok. And that is just absolutely crushed, but just foul. With 61 over the heart of the plate. That was a great hit there, but just way foul to the right side of the field. Noah has been spraying the right side of the field all day today. Hits the bat, and that's actually in play. And he'll get him out. That is a bottom of the bat hit or ball in play. I don't even know what the heck that was. But it traveled past the no foul line. Results in the ground out and we're headed to the bottom of the second.
start the bottom of the second inning. DJ Oliver will step in, 0-0, zero, zero. ball one. Uh, the Pilots offense has been real quiet so far today. Only one hit to show for it through these two games and just really looking to get the offense going here. Moses Valdez has been peppering the zone all day, deceiving batters with his low arm angle. Yeah, you know, I thought we might be seeing the Valdez from game twos of the past couple of series and when DJ let off with that long, long pop-up to deep center, but ultimately since that, he's been real quiet and just shutting down these batters and mowing through them. Three and one count. That'll be just high. DJ walks again here and upsets Mark Campanero. The runner on first. His team needs him to start producing here. Oh and oh. Yeah, no better moment than to get it going right now. Put your team up here, two nothing in the bottom of the second. Be a great moment for Mark. And that's a hard bit foul. Just foul. DJ Oliver over at first was screaming fair. Unfortunately, he's on the same team and has the worst angle. That was foul. It landed in the dirt. Mark was ready for that pitch. He's all over it. Dented the ball up. Just like that, that's fouled off. Two straight foul balls. Count is 0 and 2. Moses has been very good at enticing hitters, but not throwing strikes. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the key to hitless games. Just like that, a bit high though. Yeah, getting these hitters to chase, you know, not the normal conditions you're used to, so maybe not as comfortable up to the plate some of these guys are, and just getting them to swing and put that ball in play. Inside two and two, Mark being patient here. Rain coming down here, pretty good. And that's a hard hit ball to Aaron Schofield, gets by him. And normally the sure-handed Aaron Schofield can knock that down, unfortunately. Can't, almost gets DJ there, but Mark Campanero is on with the first hit of the day for himself, which is very uncharacteristic. Yeah, he's been peppering on that third side of the field. Moses is really trying to doctor up the ball there in between pitches, and Mark just got a pitch over the heart of the plate and smashed it. Just outside, ball one. And that's the pitch he was looking for at 55, one and one. Keaton has been. And that is in play and that's gonna land. He's gonna throw it down. It's a dead ball. Keaton can advance to second, but will hold the runner at third. And a run will come in. Keaton McKay, very clutch right there. Great hit by Keaton there. I thought that maybe had a chance to get out. It was a low line drive and ultimately fell to the base of the fence out there. And first run of the game. 0 and 1 now to Josh Campanero. Quick 0 2 count. Wait, nice job by Josh to hold off that tough pitch right there. Does not go again, two and two. And that's in play. And that is, he gets one back. He gets his base, he was running, so he, yeah. Another run will come across. like Morgan tried to do something fancy there, but no outs, 0-2. Oh, and you were kind of talking about Moses' game two struggle. You might have initiated it. 
yeah, you know, I've just been kind of picking it up that it's not as sharp. And it gets hit a little harder in these game twos for some reason. Not really sure what that is, why that is, but it just seems to be a bug that he can't tend to get through these second games. Looks like he's really picking up the pace on the mound much faster than he was in the first inning. So that is just high. Three and one count now. Yeah, and like you said, still looking for the first out of this inning right now. And I'll be – this is where we tend to see they pull him mid-game for either Aaron or Morgan. Well, it's nowhere near over yet. No outs here. Base is loaded, but – Morgan has been able to pitch himself out of issues like this before. See what he can do here. Yeah, the Aces just really need to just stop this bleeding, so to say. Giving up two runs here, no outs, bases loaded, and tough hitter and Mark Campanera up the bat. 0 and 1 count. 0 2 at 53. Mark looks like he's trying to. Move up the RBI leaderboard with that swing. Yep. He knows he's got to get a pitch here that can really put his team ahead here. And that ball is absolutely destroyed. Grand slam, and that'll end the inning. Six-run inning. Mark Campanero, as we called it, hits a grand slam. Puts the pilots up 6-0 as we head to the top of the third. And here we go, getting ready to start the top of the third. Pilots offense coming alive here in the bottom of the second, putting up the six run limit here with a Mark Campanero emphasis with grand slam. Just like that, the, the aces are down to their final three outs. They got their two best hitters today, Aaron Schofield and Moses. Back to back, we'll see if they have something to say about that. Fouled out of here, 0 and 2. Remains the count, and DJ looking for another shutout this year. Leads the league in shutouts. Got him, strike three, and that's a nasty pitch. And the pilots are rolling right now. Yeah, DJ's got it going here at the end of the game. Two outs now here to Split the series at 1-1, one, one, but not over yet. A anything can happen here in the third inning. Ace is just going to start chipping away. And swinging at good pitches against DJ here, which is easier said than done. Moses Valdez steps in. Strike right there. One and one, and DJ's been very good at starting with a first pitch strike and then kind of tempting the batters to swing later in the counts. Yeah, I mean, he's just doing everything you want out of the pitcher this game, just really shutting down this Aces offense. And like you said, getting ahead early with that slider and then just throwing pitches that aren't even really close and getting the batters to swing at it. Two and one. And just missed. Good from DJ not to run at that. It might have resulted in some injury, but two and two now the count. A pitch that Moses might have wanted back. Does that? Oh. <laughs> Honestly, it looked like he might have had a play there, but I didn't want to see the end uh, result after I that. I didn't want to see him looking up for that wiffle ball and take a step on that concrete. And yeah, next thing you know, he's on his butt, cracking his head open. And well, well, I guess he does have the cleats on. The cleats are on concrete. Never yeah. really end well. Yeah, that's what I was kind of looking at over there. And they are pretty baller cleats, I will say. Yeah. Full count now. And that is a hard hit ball in the gap. Moses going slow. 
And he definitely should not have been moving that slow because once again, Keaton McKay almost throws him out. He would have been safe if Josh came up with it, but much closer than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, he was kind of jogging down the line, but whenever that ball's hit to Keaton, you can't let up at all. He's always going to make that throw out to first base. Oregon Granich has had his difficulties here again facing DJ, just like everyone else in the league, to be fair. Mm -hmm. See if he can help his team out here using a different bat. Trying to find anything that works. 1-0. And there's that slider that he's been trying to hunt all day. A little speed switch up there, but is a ball two and one. Does not go, three one count. We'll see if DJ gives him something here. And he doesn't go. Morgan does well to lay off the pitches that have been Haunting him all day, and we'll reach base on the walk. Yeah, nice at bat there from Morgan, just seeing the pitches finally instead of hacking at all these balls, just let me see some pitches and working at bat here and end up getting on base, moving this lineup. Exactly what you need to do here in the top of the third. Runners on first and second, one out. Score six to nothing. And the Aces just need to keep putting Batters on base. They want a shot to tie it. Jack Stroll having a good day. Putting some good balls in play. Little change piece right there at 44. Oh, one. Hits them there. One and one count. Made up, he was going to swing there. One and two count. So unfortunately, that screwball has been the pitch that kind of gets Jack Scholl in this game. One and two count now. Yeah, he really likes those far outside pitches. Trying to take it the other way. Got him. Strike three, and that'll be two outs in the inning. And the ace is now down to their final out. Noah Jandock will step in. One for two so far. This game two with a base hit down that right field line. So be looking to keep it moving here. And that's in play to Josh Campanero. And he will just get the out, and it'll end the game, even the series up. And we're headed to game three, the rubber match. The Pilots take game two, six to nothing. And we'll get game three started shortly. If you're a fan of fantasy sports, try Fantasy Wiffle Ball. Link in our bio, free to play, and you win prizes every week, all season long.
Getting ready to start game number three. Mark Campanero will be the pitcher for the Pilots. And he has pitched very well this year, which has been a pleasant surprise for the Pilots. Yeah, he's got a 1.33 ERA so far this season, but he's just not eligible for his innings yet. He's only at nine innings pitch. I think right now you need 12 to be eligible for pitching leaderboards. So, I mean, he's right up there with everyone and it's limited innings, but yeah, he's been really strong this year so far. Early on in his career, his issue has been walking the batter and this year he's really done well to kind of pepper the zone. But here we go to start game three rubber match. Will the Aces be the first team to beat the Pilots in a series? We'll find out here. Yeah, I'm excited for this game three. We've got Morgan versus Mark out there on the mound. Both the team number twos traditionally, so it should be a fun high scoring game, hopefully. Ball one. Aaron Schofield looks like his back's feeling pretty good after that swing right there, one and one. <laughs> <laughs> Down the middle at 55, one and two. That's where Mark's just been very successful this year. Really enticing hitters on the balls that aren't strikes and then really pounding the zone and getting these hitters to really just watch it hit the zone and get work ahead against these guys. You gotta throw at least one strike hitting the backstop per pitcher to, or per batter to kind of respect the pitcher, know that he has the ability to throw strikes. In prior years, he unfortunately hasn't been able to do that, but early on here, he means business all over the zone here. That hits the knob. Count remain two and two. Full count now to Aaron Schofield, another thing about Mark Campanero is he a, one of the fastest pitchers in the league. Once he gets set, he's ready to go. In contrast to Brad McGinnis, who would be the game two starter here today, who is much slower. Yeah. Honestly, needs a pitch clock on him. Yeah, you know, the, not, that rule that they have in MLB where you can't get set until the batter looks up, I mean, that'd be a good rule for Mark, honestly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've had a couple encounters with him where. Yeah, well, we've seen that. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking down at the plate, setting them up, and he's already about ready to throw that ball at yeah. me. Aaron Schofield will have a leadoff walk. Something's been so well as this looks like it's the hardest it's rained all day. That's just foul out of play. Yeah, it's really starting to come down hard out here. Not Can't be ideal for these players out there. Honestly, we can't really be upset. We've had a pretty good luck weather-wise to begin the year. This is only one of two games, I think, that have actually had any rain at all. Yeah. Low there, two and one, and Aces never seeing Mark pitch, really being patient here, making him throw strikes. 
because otherwise it'll just take all day. Yep. One swing so far here through 10 pitches, I think. Thinks about it, does not go three and one count. Doesn't go and that will walk the second batter, Moses Valdez, he is on. Runners on first and second. And up steps Morgan Granich. Looking to help his team out here. As you can see in that shot, it's really coming down, looking at the concrete. Yeah, that grass out there's got to be pretty slick and wet. There's people out here, players running the bases, got to be extra careful heading into these bases. Yeah, that looks like the uh, – and that ball is in play, and that's out of here. Morgan Granich, about time. He helps his team out there with a three-run shot, hit his first career home run last week, and that's got to feel good. Yeah, I was about to say before that, this at bat, you know, Morgan is most successful when he's pulling the ball and driving it to the center of the field. And like we saw right there, he just got that thing off the ground and lasered it to left center over the dingers or nothing sign. That's huge. Fortunately, had to face DJ first two games. Not much success. Comes in, though, facing pilots number two, Mark Campanero. That's Mark's first home run given up all year. I wonder if the weather is affecting Mark's pitching a bit. Like we were saying, we've had a really good string of warm weather here. And that just adds another element that Mark has to deal with out there pitching, so not, not easy. Not favorable. And there's that outside pitch that Jack Scholl loves. Fortunately, comes up empty, one and two. Just low. Two and two. No outs here in the top of the first inning of game three. Does well to lay off of it. Now full count. Mark Campanero already up to 18 pitches here with no outs here in the first. Froze him there. Strike three. Looked like Jack was taken there. I don't blame him. Mark's had some difficulty finding the zone, but he'll get the first strikeout of game three right there. That's a big out for Mark there, centering three runs before getting the first out. It's never, never fun. So a nice job by Mark there to battle back and get the first out of the inning. Strike right there to Kanoa Jandok. 0-1. Oh Mark's starting to find the zone here. 0-2 oh at 54. He's letting the aces know I do actually know where the zone is here. And just outside. Like you said, fast worker. Once he starts pounding that zone, it seems like it never stops. He is very locked in when he's pitching. As you see here right there, back-to-back -back strikeouts there on a slow changeup to get Kanoa Jandok. Saying like when you're facing Mark, you almost have to step out of the box until you're completely ready. Because even if even if your foot's on the line, it looks like you're stepped out. Mark is not looking at the batter. He's yeah. looking right at the zone. Yeah, definitely. I love to walk around every <laughs> between every pitch and take my time and you know you can kinda, tell it annoys him. <laughs> yeah, kind of. We have different, very different philosophies. <laughs> so Aaron swinging out of his shoes right there, and that might have been the pitch. Like you said, Mark just already ready to go on the mound, staring down Aaron. And that ball is just out of reach for DJ Oliver. Mark kind of looks up. <laughs> Almost got there. I mean, we wouldn't have had a good angle on it. No. So what we say here is if we can't see it, don't, don't go for it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I lost DJ behind the tree over there, but it seemed like it would have been a great play. Got him, strike three, and after giving up the three-run home run, Mark Campanero comes back to strike out three straight batters as we head to the bottom of the first three to nothing. Morgan Granich will get the game three start. One of the few knuckleballers in the league, him, 
and Jordan Rice. You know, when these knuckleballers are locked in, they're unhittable. But as you can see right there, he's a little tough to locate as a knuckleballer. Yeah, and I feel like today's either going to be a really good day for a knuckleball or a really bad day for a knuckleball, depending on how that grip's feeling out there. So I feel like that water or that added moisture is going to add a lot of extra movement to it like that, or yep. it's going to be all over the place, and he's going to have no clue where it's going out of the hand. Well, the most viral uh, TikTok we've had, or one of them, is Jordan Rice's knuckleball, and that clip was taken on a rainy day like today. Yep. So if those balls are moving in the water, we'll, we'll see what we can get here today from Morgan Granich. Yeah, like you said, like Jordan, just a true knuckleballer, goes to that at least over 50% of the time out of all of his pitches, so, and it works for him here. Getting out of some tough situations with that pitch also. The Aces choose to sit Moses here in game three as they're waiting on their second baseman, Kanoa Jandok. Looks like he's retrieving some balls out there. DJ Oliver steps in. First time facing Morgan Granich. First pitch is a ball at 46. One thing's for sure, Morgan is definitely one of the, you know, we see DJ in the badge box towards the top of the speed limit. Moses is, or Morgan's on the other side of the speed limit. Yeah, definitely is very slow. Going to be on, sit in the lower 50s most of the time, high 40s, and just hoping that thing finds the zone. Oh, and hangs up on him a bit. Four pitch walk to DJ Oliver. And the grip has got to be an issue for anyone, specifically knuckleballers. Yeah, ball's getting thrown back and just rolling through that wet grass is not helping anything out there. Part of you thinks, you know, piles have been held in check, mostly offensively, from Moses Valdez. Probably want to start hitting here soon. This might be their only time to do it. Are they going to swing, start swinging at some of those pitches that aren't necessarily strikes? Just like that right there. 49 miles per hour, like you're saying. Morgan's at the kind of lower end of the speed, and you know you really just got to sit on it as a as a wiffle ball hitter and just drive it. One thing's for sure, those balls are moving. Just a matter of seeing if the pilots will swing at it. And that'll be two straight walks, and looks like the pilots are saying, "Hey." You can't throw any strikes, you know. Knuckleball's a tough pitch to hit. We're just not going to swing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're probably not even seeing that, seeing it that well. First at bat, seeing it today, and just kind of praying that it doesn't hit the zone. He doesn't find it against you, which he can any second. I think if Morgan worked in a secondary pitch that he could consistently throw for a strike, he'd be a, something a force to reckon with. He's, he's really just throwing only knuckleballs. Yeah, I think a good pitch for him maybe would. I mean, I'm not a I'm on, honestly a terrible pitcher in this <laughs> league, but I think a good pitch for him would be maybe like that slider cutter that DJ has and to kind of throw that different look at the hitters. Yeah, just to give him a different look, switch it up. Knuckles a great put away pitch. He looks at 2 and 0 oh to Keen McKay. 3 and 0. Oh. We'll see if Keaton will swing at a pitch here. He swings. <laughs> he did swing uh, b behind the back. Yeah, that backward swing counted, I would say. Patented swing by DJ Oliver over at second base. And that's in play to Jack Scholl. And he will miss Mark Campanero completely. And OK, that looked a little painful, but everyone's safe. You got to tag him. Well, look, look at the replay. Hey, yeah, safe. And that is one way to get a run. Yeah, we just checked. 
Three and one, now the score, runners on first and second. Keaton McKay, the king of trying to go for two on, on when you hit a single, and unfortunately this time there was someone at second base. Oh and one, or one and oh, to Josh Campanero. There's that nasty knuckleball. Nothing you can do really about that. Out in front of it, one and one. Just inside, two and one. And that is a foul ball. Just foul from Josh. Yeah, I thought that thing might dribble back into fair territory somehow. I've seen that more than once today. Luckily stayed foul. This Josh wasn't running that hard. Just nicks it to remain at two and two. We gotta see if that air from Jackshaw first will come back to haunt the aces who honestly right now could take every out they can get. Full count. That's in play to first base, and it goes under the hands of the pitcher. Looked to be a surefire out right there. And just like that, you know, when you got a second pitcher, really needs some help defensively. Two errors in the inning. Not what you want to see. Yeah, no. It would have been an easy out, like you said, right there, but just picked his head up at the last second, wasn't able to field that cleanly. And runners advance here, zero out still. One thing's for sure now, it's a little bit easier now for Morgan to get the out at home. But the bases are loaded, no outs here in the bottom of the first. And there's a nasty knuckleball top of the zone, 0-1. Oh Just misses. Rain has kind of stopped here. I wonder if that has helped Morgan with his control a little bit. EJ looking to hit right there. Got to respect it. One and two. And that ball is over the house. Foul ball. Looks like Moses is going to track it down. Nasty pitch right there, but it'll be two and two now. Looks like Keaton was trying to advance to third on that. Nasty knuckleball freezes DJ. That'll be the first out, a much needed out for Morgan Granich. Nice job by Morgan giving up that one run and battling it back as this weather's calmed down a bit and really finding his control and striking out DJ there to stop the bases from bases loaded from advancing on that at bat. Mark Campanero will step in now. He's had a grand slam already in game two. He walked his first appearance against Morgan today. Got to think Mark is not trying to walk here. Dingers are nothing. Just missed the inside corner on that pitch. 2-0. Interesting strategy here from the Aces to put their second baseman on the right side when you got such a slow pitcher like Moses or Morgan Granich. So that ball is, and just as I say that, he yeah. hits it oppo. He will be safe at second. We'll look at the replay, but a run will come in nonetheless. Safe at second base. The score now is three to two. Yeah, like you said, they had the second baseman playing over, but it actually be, was the right spot, yeah. just a little to the left, unfortunately. And I guess with knuckleballers, you know, some of these hitters are don't really see it that much. So maybe that that's that split second where they decide if they want to hit it or not, which results in pushing it. Exactly. Big wind up there. 
Yeah, I had a nice launch angle on that swing. I think that ball would have been over the left field wall. Just miss inside, two and one to Keaton McKay. It's already robbed a home run. Spikes that one right there as Morgan looks at his grip. See what he does here. Tying run, 50 feet away at third base. Swing right there, full count now. Got him, strike three. And that is a huge strikeout from Morgan Granich. Two outs now in the inning and upsets the number two overall pick from the 2021 draft, Josh Campanero. Huge, two huge strikeouts from Morgan out there to sit down to these pilot batters looking on that knuckleball. Two outs here now in the bottom of the first. A little bit of a meeting here between Captain Aaron Schofield and the first overall or second overall pick from this year's draft, Morgan Granich. Just outside, ball one. Two and oh, and we'll see. Josh has been a very patient hitter in this year. Let's see if you can redirect one of these knuckle balls over the wall. Inside now, three and oh count. Unfortunately for Morgan, after Josh, it doesn't get much easier. Can't really pitch around anyone. As that will walk in Josh Campanero. Now we have a tie game. <laughs> and up steps DJ Oliver, who struck out on one of those nasty knuckleballs. Be looking to have a different result this at bat. And Morgan just missing. Gotta wonder what are the aces gonna do if they gotta pull him. The only other aces pitcher, I guess there are two pitchers, but Aaron Schofield fortunately has a 20 ERA. It's fell back. I think we've seen Jack at one point this season. Can't can't recall how how well he did. Wasn't great. <laughs> he does have a lower ERA than Aaron. Aaron's ERA is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> two two. Full count now here. Bases loaded. Tie game. Bottom of the first. Two outs. We'll see. And that's in play to the first baseman, knocks it down, and they get out of the inning. Two innings where both teams score three runs. The bottom half took a little bit longer, but nonetheless, we're headed to the top of the second. Score three to three.
Hello there, everyone. I'm taking over for Jack as the play-by-play -play guy. I'm joined by my team captain here, Jake Oliver. Great guy to have on the color call with me today, and excited to watch this game with him. Here we go here, 2-0 count to Moses. Two one count here to Moses. Three one there. How are you feeling today, Jake? Uh, pretty good. Um, just worked. Yeah. What have you seen so far from these from these two teams today? Uh, it's a pretty good matchup here. Uh, pretty exciting to watch. A lot of good games. Pretty uh, two good real real good teams. So. Yeah. What do you think about DJ's pitching today? Uh. Well, it's wet. And I uh, think he did pretty good. I think Mo did too. I uh, know both of them very well. Coached with Mo for a couple of years. Yeah. yeah so. Know quite a few of these guys out here. Yeah. yeah. Here steps Morgan Granich. One out here in the top of the second. Holds up on that pitch there. Mark's actually been uh, impressing me a lot today. His stuff looks really good. Yeah, Mark been one of the better pitchers in the league so far this season. Just like me and Jack were saying, hasn't reached that innings mark yet to crack the leaderboards. Yeah, he was out here early uh, getting some work in, so it's good to see. Yeah, I got to love to see it. A guy who's been working up here for years on his pitching finally paying off this season and get a courtesy swing there from Morgan. Yeah, yeah attaboy. We love those 3 0 hacks here. Learned that from my guy, Jake Oliver himself. That was a good hack. Straight back. Yeah, the thing with uh, a lot of guys in the league, uh, they pretty much only throw one speed oh, foul ball there. Uh, so if you're just on time for that, you know, 60 mile per hour pitch, even if they're throwing a bunch of junk, if you're on time for that pitch, you're going to probably have pretty good success. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean,. If you're sitting 60, that's when almost it gets hard when the, we see these guys like Morgan out here throwing high high 40s, low 50s. It's hard to adjust to at times. Right. Oh, yeah, those uh, are real probably toughest play in, uh, in wiff ball trying to throw it across the diamond there. Yeah, no doubt. That wet grass out there doesn't make it any easier, but credit to DJ fielding that cleanly and Attempting to throw over there at first. Here steps in Jack Scholl here. <laughs> Ball one. Oh. Yeah, I will say I think the biggest change in the league this year is the there's no real easy outs. You know, there's guys in every lineup that there's no freebies. I mean, even the four and five holes are just they're dangerous, especially the aces. I mean, Jack and Kanoa, they took me yard, I think, like four times. So. Yeah, these two teams are easily the deepest one through five teams, in my opinion, up in the league. So as Mark strikes out, Jack Scholl there. Two down here now in the top of the second. As we're on the screen now, me and my buddy Jake. So watching this game out here, starting to lighten up a bit. Hope you're all enjoying this 3-3 three to three matchup right now. And here steps in Kanoa Jandok. Strike one there to Kanoa. Mark really pounding the zone this inning. Mm -hmm. Not easy to do on a wet day like this for sure. Strike two. Strike three for Mark Campanero there. Clean inning. Giving up the one runner on first and closing out there. Heading to the bottom of the second now. Three to three.
Mark stepping in here in the bottom of the second inning. Three to three ball game. Oh. Is that the wrong ball? <laughs> I think that, that I think that might have been the wrong ball. Hey, as long as Mark doesn't hit a uh, home run, am I right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Much rather keep Mark on first base than having him trot around yeah. the bases. Well, and for uh, the leaderboard's sake, you know, you oh. and me. Exactly, yeah. If we're talking about leaderboards up here, Jake's now tied with Mark, or I should say Mark is now tied with Jake for the leading home runs as yeah. we're entering the sixth week of the season. Yeah. I believe uh, Keaton's sitting at six also. Yep. Got a Keaton and Mark out here leading the pilots in home runs. They're both at seven okay. home runs now. Fouled off there by Keaton. Yeah, two one. Two one count here to Keaton. Ball hits him. What do you think about Keaton's defensive plays this year, Jake? I mean, he's always been that good. Oh. Close. Oh, wow. Got room out there. Nice play. Be first out of the inning there for Morgan. Getting Keaton to pop up to Moses there at first base. I mean, I don't think I've seen anyone rob as many home runs as <laughs> he <laughs> has this season. I mean, yeah. like me and Jack talk when we're up here, we never doubt him when he's out there on the defense uh, making plays. I think the only reason he didn't, didn't get that first one in the first game is he hit his head on the yellow piping. Yeah, exactly. Ball one here to Josh from Morgan. One out here in the bottom of the second. Misses high there with a 2-0 count now to Josh. Yeah, the wet ball is probably real hard to knuckle. So. Oh. Foul. We have a foul ball there. I mean, what's it like out there, Jake, when you're pitching and got a wet ball and you're trying to work on all these, all your pitches, you know, and you've got these different grips and everything like that? Got some, we got some controversy here. Okay. Had some controversy there from the pilots. We went to the review booth and ultimately be a foul ball. Two one count here to Josh. Big swing there. Three two count. One out here in the bottom of the second. Ball four. Pilots getting back to the top of their lineup here with DJ now. Keeping it going. Looking to tack on some insurance runs here. Strike one. So what's kind of your approach when you're facing a knuckleballer, Jake? When you're facing Jordan the other day and stuff like that? Uh, just trying to just get up a little bit in the box. Ooh, nice pace. Foul. Yeah, if you uh, take it, you know, scoot up in the box and then you hit it before it starts knuckling on you. If you see it early you yeah trying to get your barrel out but yeah it's it's, it's tough it's yeah. my, definitely my least favorite pitch yeah hit, so. no doubt adding that pitch with all the other ones you gotta try to hit in this league and it's never fun yeah <laughs> yeah there's definitely days though like when you got weather like this and it's wet out there you don't some pitches that you probably don't lean on as much mm -hmm. other pitches that you lean on more than you probably would normally hard hit to the middle everybody's be safe Morgan fields that cleanly and 
ends up having the bases loaded. Right, got to be up here. Yeah, had that deep home run to left center earlier to tie you in the league lead in home runs with seven, extending his RBI lead. Yeah, probably my uh, least favorite hitter to face, <laughs> this guy right here. Man, Seems you guys have battled each other a lot, haven't you? Oh, yeah. It's always fun watching you two battle. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet uh, biggest rivalry in the league is uh, Pilots and Forcers. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I know we got another game against them yeah. later this season. 2-0 count here to Mark. Good count right here. See if he gets him to hit. Oh, good hack. Two yeah, one. Played the stingers a lot too, actually. Yeah. Takes that pitch for a three one count now. Some will say this in baseball hitters pitch. Ball four. Walks in a run. Yeah, that's the tough part about throwing knocks, you know, not even the pitcher knows where they're going sometimes, so just yeah, and like you're saying, with that wet weather out there, I mean, I know me and Jack were talking that Jordan had the infamous TikTok video of his knuckleball on a wet day, mm -hmm. but yeah, the humidity actually helps with the knuck action, but the fact that the ball is gonna be stickier because it, it's wet out, it's yeah. harder to get out of your hand, get the right action. Yeah, up steps Keaton McKay here, the Pilots four three lead, now in the bottom of the second with one out. Yeah, I'm not sure if Morgan really has much as far as other pitches, so yeah. We see him really rely on that knuckleball about 80, 90 percent of the time as he works a strike there to Keaton for a one-one count. Yeah, live and, by, live and die by the sword. If it works, it's it's great, and if it's off, it's off. So. Yeah, we've seen him this season get out of some really sticky jams with that knuckleball. So I mean, like you said, gonna ride with it. It's either gonna live by the three or die by the three, or should I say knuckleball? Yeah. <laughs> two two count. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Full count now here to Keaton. Oh, dirty. Strike three on that outside knuckleball pitch. It's a tough pitch. Can't really do much. Nope, that's the second out of this inning, but the Pilots still have the lead four to three here as Josh Campanero steps up. Yeah, Josh is having a really good year this year for sure he's definitely due for another bomb here yeah I think he's got like three or four bombs this year I think he's got three home runs this season so I mean been a little quiet since his last home run but I mean he's doing what a better situation right now than with the bases loaded fouls off that first pitch there ready to swing this at bat I'd love to see it It's tough with a knuckleballer, too, because if you don't hit it square, it's not going out. Yeah, you're either just going to pop it up right back to the pitcher or foul or just dribble it. So got to make sure you get every, every piece of that pitch. And even if you do hit it square, sometimes it just doesn't fly because you don't catch the holes. So. Yeah, sometimes you hit it way too hard, right, and it just yep. shoots straight up. 2-2 two, two count now here to Josh. Nothing worse than hitting it as hard as you can, and it just dimples on you. <laughs> Yeah, it tends to happen to you and Josh quite a bit. In my Josh Gradwell, I should say, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Oh. Strike three. Nice shot by Morgan to get out of the inning there. There we have it. Out number three of the inning on a strikeout from Morgan Granich. We're heading to the top of the third, four to three. Here we go here, top of the third inning. Mark entering this inning with a one-run lead. Yeah. 
And like we've been saying all game, there's the classic Aaron Schofield. <laughs> That's his specialty, ripping it foul into the oh, yeah. bushes over there and left. Never takes a half uh, swing, that's for sure. Yeah, I gotta love that. Another guy that uh, has a common problem hitting the ball too hard. Yeah, exactly. There's, I'd say there's about eight or nine of those kind of hitters in this league and spread out between all the teams. But yeah, we've got some very hard swingers in this, in this league, and Aaron's definitely one of them. O2 pitch. Oh. oh, nice play. There you go, PFP. Routine ball. Nice shot by Mark to get the first out of this inning. It's the biggest out, wouldn't you say, Jake? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely got to get the leadoff guy. If the leadoff guy gets on, most of the time he's scoring. So. Yeah. Moses Valadez stepping into the box. Him and Aaron have been motoring the way for this Aces team today. Oh, just missed that. Just missed that. And you said you played a bit with Moses, right, Jake? Yeah, I played and uh, coached with him for a couple of years. So. Very nice. Uh, actually, we, it's funny now because the uh, kids we used to coach are actually popping up in the league now, like Jace Pratt. He was on our team for a couple of years. That's, that's got to be awesome to see. Yeah. Strike three there from Moses, unfortunately. Second out of the inning for Mark as he's just getting to work here. Top of the third, got that one run lead and just trying to close the door here quickly for the Pilots and win this series. I feel like uh, Mark's very much a rhythm and momentum kind of guy, so, so when it's going good, it's good. Yep. So just keep it going. And if the Pilots were to win this, they would still not have lost a series this season yet. Yikes. Well, uh, last series of the year, I think he's got a <laughs> <laughs> tough matchup. We'll there. give him a run for their money, that's for sure. Right. Always got to love facing the Pilots. Do it a lot. Granch with a 2 0 count here. Watches that pitch for 57 miles per hour for strike one. Yeah, I think the second or third guy on the roster of the pitches, you really got to just kind of pick out one pitch that you know that they can throw for a strike, and that's the one you want to try and tack. So. Yep, hunting pitches up there, that's how a lot of hitters are very successful, you know. It's really hard to track five or six pitches from a guy like you or DJ, so you really just got to sit on a pitch and just hope you get in and put a good swing on it. Ball four there to Morgan. It's going to be right there. And that gives the Aces some life here with two outs here in the top of the third and Jack Scholl stepping up. He had that home run that was robbed by Keaton earlier today in that right center gap and that's where Keaton's standing right now again. Yeah, I think uh, a couple times that uh, Jack's taken me yard, he was on a couple risers and that's pr pretty much what Mark's throwing here, so see if he gets a good pitch to hit. Yep, Jack likes those risers definitely. Very uh, bottom hand swing heavy. Mm -hmm. That's all you need, just backspin on that. It was one of the first pitches I learned to hit. Easiest one along with the slider, in my opinion, to learn as we have a 3-0 count here for Jack. 3-1. I mean, strike Love to see it. one. Love, yeah. to see it. Love to see it. Courtesy swing. Not wanting to walk on four straight pitches. We do not like that here. Yeah, the two easiest hits, pitches to hit are usually the two most common ones, too. So mm -hmm. it's kind of nice. Oh, I got it. Strike two as it just catches the zone. Jack was not swinging at anything on that pitch. Ooh, just missed it. Fouled it off there. Battling, not wanting to go down. Mark, one strike away from securing another win on the season for him. Been very good this season pitching so far. And this would be a great way for him to keep it rolling with a close out here in the top of the third. One run victory. Fouled off there down yeah. the right field line. Even if it doesn't turn out the way they want it, I think this is a good uh, confidence builder for Mark here. Yeah. I tend to do that a lot. The game is not over. Good guy there. Oh. Oh, and out of play. And the 
runners will advance to second and third on the throw. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, runners will be advancing on the throw there at first. So, Ace is not out of it yet. I mean, you got Clutch, Clutch Kanoa Jandok up right here. I mean, probably the most clutch hitter on this Aces team. He's done it a couple of times this year for them. And what better situation than now when you got the tying run on third, two outs. As you watch his ball one there from Mark. Just fouls that one off. End of the bat. Good swing there. Good pitch. And just maybe a little over aggressive earlier. Hasn't really uh, got a good pitch to hit yet. Oh, there it is. That was a real good pitch right down the heart of the plate. One, two count here. Big pitch. Noah takes that for ball two, 2-2 two, two count. Mark's making sure he's getting that grip all nice between every pitch. Strike three. There we have it, ball game. Pilots take the series two to one with a 4-3 win here in game three of this series. It's a great series here today. We had a little bit of everything from weather-wise and Got to be joined by my good captain here, Jake Oliver. So hope Thanks everyone has a good night, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Yep. Good night.